some people who were on this committee in the past mm -hmm. have run through this before because we actually passed it out of here two years ago or three years ago? Maybe okay. three or maybe even four. We passed it out of here, it passed the floor unanimously, and then it died over there. Over there. <laughs> okay. So, Jen, yes. if you would like to join us here sure. and walk us through. Jennifer Carvey, Legislative Council. So this is very similar to the version that some of you saw a few years ago. Um, this is S-297, an act relating to the Agency of Healthcare Administration. Um, I've updated the findings a bit to um, have more, more recent numbers toward the end in looking at um, healthcare expenditures constituting over 25% of total state spending, second only to spending on K-12 education, um, updating some dates, things like that. Um, so this goes through, and basically the, the overall idea is that it splits the Agency of Human Services into two agencies, an Agency of Healthcare Administration and an Agency of Human Services. And the Agency of Healthcare Administration would comprise the Department of Health Access, which is like the Department of Vermont Health Access, the Medicaid agency, so it's the su successor there. The Department of Mental Health and Substance Misuse, the Department of Long-Term Care, which pulls a piece out of Dale, um, the Department of Public Health, which is the successor to the Department of Health, the Healthcare Board, which is like the Human Services Board, to hear appeals from decisions of the departments, and the Vermont Health Benefit Exchange, Vermont Health Connect, where the exchange plans are that's currently in DEVA. Um, and the way it's structured is, is very much, I mean, I, I took the Agency of Human Services statutes and kind of created a parallel version for the Agency of Healthcare Administration. Um, so for the most part, it is just the same, same general thing, creating a secretary, a deputy secretary, talking about the role of advisory committees, transferring personnel and appropriations as appropriate, moving a couple of the specific policy sections that are in the AHS chapter on um, the duty over healthcare reform, having a director of healthcare reform, moving that person from Agency of Human Services to Agency of Healthcare Administration, having the wholesale drug importation program, again, in, in the Agency of Healthcare Administration, not in the Agency of Human Services. Um, so a lot of it is, is fairly standard, I think, uh, agency language, but in some cases, obviously, tweaked to fit the mission of this Agency of Healthcare Administration, um, and talking about the different departments within it. And what, what where is the, the division of all the, like, Dale, and of all the different... So that, that some of place? where that ends up, uh, so there are a couple of provisions. There's some language in um, revisions to the AHS statutes that talk about what is left there, which I think we called the department. So on page 24 is what's left in the Agency of Human Services, which would be the Department of Corrections, the Department for Children and Families. This is section three. Sorry, well, it was... Right, section 24, or page 24, yeah, section, section three. three. So what's left in the Agency of Human Services is the Department of Corrections, Department for Children and Families, the Department of Independent Living, which would take the disabilities and independent living concept from Dale. And it becomes a, a DIL instead um, of a Dale. Yes. Uh, and then the Human Services Board is still there for the appeals side on um, human services programs, but the rest of it moves over to the Agency of Healthcare Administration and in some cases gets some revised names. And then there is also a little bit of language um, toward the end about, um, where is this? About the uh, healthcare, so in the very end, page 36, the Agency of Healthcare Administration is the successor to and the continuation of Department of Vermont Health Access, Department of Mental Health, long-term care and home and community-based service components of Dale, and the Department of Health. And so the agency would continue the duties of those departments. There are some transitional provisions, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I think sometimes it's easier to understand the concepts than march through the language. Um, so on page 32 and a few, for the, a few pages thereafter, 
There is uh, transitional language talking about transfer of positions, so directing the Secretary of Administration to create the new Secretary of Healthcare Administration position before October 1st, 2021, and then beginning October 1st, 2021, um, the Secretary of Administration would place under the supervision of that new Secretary all of the employees, professional and support staff, consultants, and physicians in all of the department's offices, divisions and offices to which the agency is the successor in interest and of the balances of appropriation amounts for those up to 20 positions from the Agency of Human Services to staff the Office of the Secretary of Healthcare Administration and the funds to go with that. It would require the Agency of Human Services to provide fiscal and administrative support for the Agency of Healthcare Administration until March 1st, 2022, and by, not later than January 1st, 2023, the, the transfer would need to be complete. Um, so there's there are sort of transitional provisions as you're moving people from one agency to the other, but that should be finished by January 1st, 2023, the people and the money. So where is... Sorry, I just don't see 2023 anywhere. Page 33. Oh, page 30. I'm sorry, I was at 37. I thought we'd see Okay, there. no, we didn't get that right. So 30. We did, but then I moved back. And the yes. So subsections D and E are looking forward to uh, January 1st, 2023 as the end of the reorganization and transition process. And then there's, there would also be directive to um, the Secretary of Administration, this is now on page 34, um, to submit to the committees of jurisdiction, including this committee, by December 1st, 2021, a proposal for dividing up Dale uh, into a Department of Long-Term Care in one agency and Department of Independent Living in, in the other. Um, and then talk specifically about the Department of Long-Term Care having the authority to administer the choices for care part of um, Vermont's Medicaid waiver and that the Department of, uh, and to, I'm sorry, and to regulate long-term care, regulate organizations providing home and community-based services and certify long-term care facilities on behalf of CMS, which is Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is something Dale does now. And then the Department of Independent Living would provide services to Vermonters who are elders and to individuals with disabilities to allow them to remain in their homes, including voc rehab services, vocational rehab services. Um, and then another proposal by the same date, December 1st, 2021, uh, again to various committees, including this one, with any additional modifications to the departments, units, and divisions that were transferred from the Agency of Human Services to the new agency as needed to reflect the new departments of uh, health access, of mental health and substance misuse, and of public health. And then that is basically at their directive to my office on page 36 to fix the statutes over the summer as would be needed to reflect the references to um, Agency of Human Services and Agency of Healthcare Administration as appropriate. Um, and some transitional, uh, some intent language on transitional funding, that it would be the intent of the General Assembly to provide in the Appropriations Act funding the Agency of Administration in fiscal year 2021 to be transferred to the Agency of Human Services uh, for transition costs associated with reorganization. So that is basically what's in it. So even though you talk a lot about transfer, transition, yep. workers moving here and there, yep. there's no real physical movement that's going on. I, I think right. I think there would have to be discussion about whether there was needed to be physical movement or not. Right. I don't know what the capacity is or whether this would be adding. This may be adding. Uh, I don't know if it would be adding new positions or not. So I think that would some of that would depend on the reorganization. And then in that case, there may need to be physical moving to lump people who are working right. together into the same lump isn't a good word, but to put them in the same space so to allow them to work together as opposed to maybe spreading out two agencies across facilities. But I think there are other people who would have thoughts on that too. Right, I'll see what Jacob said in the kitchen says. I mean, I don't know what, I mean, I only say that because that might involve all kinds of money. Yeah. Because Nolan is gonna tell us oh, how much money is means dollars. And also, <laughs> no you're not? Oh, not, not, not today. Not today. <laughs> but right. we all know that the 
person who is passionate about this is the person who controls the person. Sure. So, but she has, this is like the fourth time she's tried to get, right? She's introduced this. It's taken, she's introduced I'm it introduced several times. It, it has been introduced it has been at least a few times, times before. Yeah. I recall this. This is my second time, but I don't know. It may have been happened before that. You think, was that the first one? It, it's never passed the House, as I remember. Right. They never even took it up. I don't know. I think the issue has been around for a while. It may be the, this may be only the second time the it's second been introduced. the second time it's been inter actually physically introduced. Or, and I think that, I think that. The concept has been around yeah. for a while. So we're going to hear from the sponsor about why we, what the, the yes. objective is, clearly. And Great. thank you. And it's also, you know, I think laid out to some extent in the findings. Yes, I, I think the findings are sure. terrific. I'm yeah. enjoying yeah. them. Yeah. All right. Any more questions for Jen? Nope. Over there. Okay. No, but it's nice thank to you. have you in this committee. It's my first time this year, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sure we'll get yes, it. March 11th. March 11th. Yeah. Or uh, the secretary. Yeah. Yes. I'll work with Gail, but that should be yeah. absolutely fine. It's far enough. It feels like a lifetime right now. It's <laughs> <laughs> a whole new month. Perfect. It is a whole new month. I know. Perfect. <coughs> yes, we're going to get to this too. Okay. I don't mean to go get you No, she just texted oh, her. Okay. I mean, she just emailed her. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, maybe cannabis is getting ready to be voted. Thank you. Okay, we should read the findings and be prepared for Jane. I'm channeling the house at the moment. And I, I believe that last time we did this, the only um, opposition came officially from some of the commissioners but unofficially they actually supported it but officially they couldn't support it uh, because the then administration did not support it um, but I, have you heard anything from the administration yes Mike Smith is going to come in and testify on March 11th mm -hmm. oh right that's what we yes. just heard set up yes <coughs> And at that point, we will also then, um, I guess, hear from the SCA. Or today, we might have, we'll probably have time. I think, Madam Chair, we probably would prefer to, if, if it would please the chair and the committee, listen to today's testimony and brief our members uh, in order to get a better understanding of their position on the issue. All right. Okay, then. And make it short. Yes, of course. I did tell you that Gail was going to give me that plaque, right? <laughs> it says, I am not bossy, I am the boss. Oh, yeah, so this is giving me all sorts of ideas for your birthday presents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Jess, uh, Jen has walked us through. Oh, she has. Bill. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh. Word for word. Oh, we did an overview. <laughs> she did an overview. And if you would like to just give us the, your understanding of why we feel this is necessary. Okay. Well, this isn't my first um, <laughs> Wait, first oh. <laughs> time uh, with this issue. And I just want to start back a little bit um, because um, I have been around so long, I predate the Agency of Human Services. I started in social welfare and there was no agency. So I have been there when it was created and I understand the world as it existed in the early 70s. And um, during that uh, intervening period of time, our health care spending, our agenda, and the role that the state is playing has grown enormously. Um, so health care is now our second largest area of spending in state government after K through 12. And, <clears throat> um, and we have a very ambitious agenda as it relates to how we want to finance care, um, how we are um, moving through, we have another waiver to negotiate, and um, my reason for um, proposing a uh, healthcare administrative entity that is focused on the administration and the management of our healthcare policies, resources, is accountability. And the Agency of Human Services is half of state government. 
and everybody will say, well, it's, you know, you can't take that, it's all connected. And if you carry that argument out, you should manage everything out of the governor's office because everything is connected to everything else. And if there are areas where people talk about the need being the greatest, it's housing, transportation, and jobs. So you have to look at how systems need to understand and work across systems, but you also have to have organizational entities that are of a size and scope and complexity that um, you can hold someone accountable for administering. And right now, to ask one administrator to be responsible, and the Agency of Human Services is an umbrella agency, so the Secretary's office is really role to bring together all those various functions and make sure the policies align, that there's oversight, that the financing um, and everything comes together in, a, in, a, um, in the best possible way. So back in the early 1970s, we of course still had institutions, and you had um, state hospital um, with, I don't, when I first started, it was like 1,300 patients. You had Brandon. So you had, um, you had a very different kind of environment in terms of how people were being served, what those relationships were. So the a fundamental question, I would say, would we expect the CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield to run prisons, collect child support, protect children, and the list goes on and on. And I think we would say that is a scope of such diverse um, uh, area that it is very um, difficult, if impossible. Now, I know that I'm seeing this from a different perspective because I've maintained my involvement. If I had not been involved when I left in 2002, I would be seeing the agency as I knew it. But sitting next door, I see how that healthcare agenda has evolved and how it's expanded and the enormous fiscal and policy implications that are there. So um, if you don't have that continuous kind of understanding of and what the challenges are, it's easy to say, well, that's the way it was or that made sense. In 1973, healthcare was essentially Medicaid, plus your institutions, as I was talking about. And Medicaid was limited to people who are on public assistance or in a nursing home. Pretty simple. I mean, we said the director could manage the program out of his bottom drawer. Those days are long gone, but our organizational design is still the same. And um, so, and yet you look at the other part of the system, which is under tremendous pressure and need for attention and leadership, and that is look at what we want to do in uh, corrections. Uh, justice reinvestment as we're moving people into the community, how we provide those housing supports, how we transform that system, major agenda. I think corrections, um, does fit very much with our other casework and our social work uh, functions because families um, are attached generally to the um, inmates or individuals on probation. Some, in fact, are mothers. Um, <laughs> children could be in the child welfare system. Our child welfare system is under tremendous pressure, no question about it. We're trying to understand why we bring more children into state custody by far than other states around us, how we can look at that system, what is driving it, because that's a major um, area where we put more money, but uh, let me tell you, if we're concerned about trauma, <laughs> anyone ending up in the child welfare system, uh, it's tremendous, um, uh, <laughs> tremendous trauma to kids and, and to families. Uh, the other um, part, as you're looking is um, there's an agenda looking at um, in general assistance on housing and emergency housing moving away from vouchers how you do that how you work with communities tremendous amount of work associated with uh, all of that so um, I was um, my thinking is that we need to look at what should be the right functional alignment of responsibilities and programs and um, activities of government and how to create um, entity, organizational entities that are manageable and we should expect um, 
um, an administrator to be able to oversee and to pay attention to this myriad of things, whether it's uh, on the healthcare side and anybody who's on health and welfare in the morning knows the, uh, the work that's um, attached. There's the waiver that's got to be renegotiated, the development of the ACO, how that is being rolled out, um, the connection with, um, um, you know, other parts of the delivery system, it's uh, payment reform, it's, it's the complexity um, and um, uh, the, the financial stakes are enormous there. And then the connections back, and I, I talked to Secretary Mike Smith, and um, I had talked with him the first time we were considering this legislation, which the Senate passed unanimously. And he said his thinking had evolved because he's been working in vital. He's been looking at all these pieces um, that are really important to the um, administration of, of our health care, and eventually, hopefully, uh, providing better care and, um, and looking at costs and how technology and data help um, do that. So um, he's not able to come in today, but he is able to provide that perspective because after he's left, He's actually also had connections with um, other parts of the delivery, um, with the delivery system as well as Medicaid and understands um, the, uh, com uh, the, the, um, uh, the huge stakes that are involved in the renegotiation of our waiver. And uh, if you don't know, but the waiver allows us to pay for services that Medicaid would not normally pay. And we have over $100 million of those services. So uh, that's why I'm just using an example of how high um, the fiscal impacts are. Um, so if you look at all the different um, areas that really uh, policy committees are saying needs, to, needs uh, a lot of work and a lot of attention um, to put together, it doesn't mean that you disconnect everything. I want to understand that. Our problem is, uh, you know, we talk about siloed funding, and we do have siloed funding. But what bothers me more is our siloed thinking that um, happens too frequently, and people not being able to see those connecting points with other systems and working across those systems. Because education is a separate system. Economic development, job creation, um, transportation, and yet those are critical components in terms of improving lives of Vermonters. So um, silo thinking allows you to feel very comfortable with what you have. Another area that I have been harping on for a long time, and that is we have case management. Everybody's a case manager. They case manage their bundle of services. They're not, it's not like healthcare where you have a medical home where that primary care practice is responsible for your overall health care. You may need to see a specialist for, or several specialists, but you have a medical home. Right now we have, as I say, we have systems where we have everybody involved and nobody accountable. And everybody's doing their part perfectly, they think, um, but yet you're not moving forward. So I would love to get us at some point when we're looking at um, the social <coughs> services side, the casework, the case management side, where we have a system where you have, just like a medical home, a casework home. Because a lot of times you find families are served by four or five different entities, but who has overall responsibility? So there are many, many systems issues that have gone on unaddressed um, over time. And um, I just, I, I feel that some of it is that there's only so many hours in the day, there's so much mental energy you've got in terms of what you can look at at any one time and what you can be, anyone can really realistically expect any person um, to be able to understand. And um, so that, that's why I feel um, that this is a way of better accountability. I'm not, I'm not doing this because I think it saves money. It might, but it's not. It's making sure that we have an organizational construct that is 
realistically um, within a manageable scope. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So Jane, why do you, I, I, hear, I hear you on all of this, but I'm just curious how you think this is going to improve accountability. Just because it will be smaller or, 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 or the, I mean, I'm just curious how you think this is going to improve accountability. Because it will allow a, a more um, focused a managerial right. attention on all our health care policies, spending, and those how and the transformation of our delivery system. And do we not ask for that now? I mean, we ask for a lot of that now. But for a secretary to be managing that process, which includes how vital is functioning. Right. Remember, that was not like good for a long time. We were very unhappy with the spending that was there, um, and so forth. It's how how do you uh, how does one person have the time to deal with corrections on top of that health care agenda? We have a very ambitious, if we do it, the justice reinvestment. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in corrections. We know that. That system is really under great pressure. We can't hire the staff. We've got a, a whole lot of cultural and policy um, needs that have been identified and need to be addressed. We need to look at our child welfare system. We need to look at how, what we're uh, funding, how we're funding, how we're holding um, the providers uh, accountable, um, how we're serving families. Those are all uh, great examples, but they're very, they take a lot of time. And so, um, you, you know, you, you've got people with different perspectives in terms of how you want to solve that problem. You listen to uh, one group and they, this answer for child welfare is one thing versus another. Um, it, you know, an example was, to be honest, the issue around the rate of children coming into custody was one that we I picked up in, in appropriations. It didn't come from the administration. It didn't come from DC. No, it didn't. It came from, and that was why we put money in the budget last year for 200000 to work with UVM, School of Social Work, nursing, and, um, and then we have the uh, Children's Health Improvement Project to take a look at what is happening. Why, why are children um, coming in? Are we funding the right services? Are we intervening in the right, right. way? Um, are we using um, interventions that might have worked 20 years ago but don't? And people will say, well, it's the opioid crisis. Well, every state's got opioid crisis. Worse, some, many worse in Vermont. Poverty. Well, we have poverty, but we don't have the deep depths of poverty that some other states have. So the question is, what are what are those factors? How do we shape the policies? How do we look at what we're doing? Those are all very massive um, pieces of work that need uh, administrative time. And it's easy for me to say, gee, this is a real problem. Let's take a study and look at it. But then someone has got to be able to act on it and say, how do we, how do we change what we're doing? The same thing is true. Um, Senator White will know this when uh, you talk about justice reinvestment, what that's going to mean to the whole correction system, both institutional and on the community side. So I, these are these are times when our old legacy systems are having to be re um, re looked at, and um, some of our practices need to be challenged. Some of the what we're funding probably needs to be maybe used in different ways. Uh, I when you put it all together. Um, it is the, the needs of today um, and shedding and moving out of these kind of legacy um, compartmentalization um, really are going to require some time and some leadership and some vision. And so I, I'm just trying to give a, a scope of responsibility where um, it's realistic for a person to be able to succeed. Or just say, oh my God, that's so big. No wonder they didn't get to that. Or, you know, whatever. So we're kind of reacting. So it's with um, how many years of perspective? Um, 53 years, starting in 1967, um, that I am looking at this um, and saying, um, the construct that we put in place in the early 70s 
is not serving us well with the demands and the complexities of today. So that is my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so um, does that help? Yeah. It does help. And um, I, I have supported this measure and I have loved and appreciated all the things that have been done currently sort of in and around the edges of, 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 of making it work and streamlining services. So for example, from a user point of view, like uh, uh, when we, they, they now have a net sort of a navigator in each county who uh, in our county, it's Sue Graf, uh, but it was Lynn Boyle, who, uh -huh. who you could call about any of the connected AHS things and you wouldn't have to call each area, but they could intervene mm -hmm. on all in all areas, and when you're dealing with constituents who have whose lives touch every one of those, and there are times I have to it's say, very helpful. And I will say that there are times when, in fact, I feel like I'm the case manager for a lot of the people in my area when they call, and right. I'm saying that isn't that isn't right, right. or I'll help you with that, um, or um, why didn't you get referred for this? You know, your mother qualifies for SSI. Right. Um, that shouldn't. I mean. It, you know, that's not the way you want to have assurances that people are uniformly getting the information. And, you know, I, uh, so I, I understand it. it. There's a lot of information there um, to absorb. And, um, and I, I understand those regional coordinators. They're great. Well, they are. I, I, you know, I was there yeah, when yeah. we put them in place, and we actually gave them some flexible money, which we've been taking away right. bit by bit, right. um, which bothers me. Um, so um, that was an effort at the community level um, to look at, and, you know, and if we're going to move together with that housing initiative to get away from motels, that those are the kind of uh, positions that are going to have to lead that. Yeah, they're going to have to bring together the the agencies or. Um, so, that, to me, that that is um, on, uh, the, at the community level, um, trying to make sure that all the people that have got to come together, um, in fact, do, or to get the community engagement that's that's necessary. But it it takes um, it takes a lot of time, yeah. and it takes being able to move beyond what my program is or what my department does. Have other states, um, I assume other states have, have, yeah, they're, have they're all over the map. They're yeah, all over the map. But, but I, you know, we, we change our committees here within the building. We have, you know, sort of every five or six years we have new needs with our committees. We change them around, hopefully, to address things more effectively. It makes sense to do some of this. I don't think. Oh. Oh, that's not us. No, it's cannabis. Oh, it's cannabis. Cannabis are us. <laughs> it um, will be coming towards us. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Um, so um, it, you can slice and dice this a variety of ways, but what I am trying to recognize is um, uh, the way in which we organize functions in in the neatest way. There'll never be any clean, you know what I mean? No. You, it's, people still have to work across um, systems and um, so forth. But um, I, am, I am trying to make sure that these key systems get the administrative leadership and attention that is warranted to, to deal with um, very, very complex and very substantial um, areas of really service and delivery transformation. So that's um, my motivation for doing it. And, um, um, and I'm sorry, um, Secretary Smith couldn't come in, um, but um, I'm sure you'll be having him at another time. Soon. He'll be coming in soon. Yeah, he's going to come in. We're doing it next Wednesday. Oh. I mean, the Wednesday yeah. he'll come back. Okay. And we're hoping that we'll just be able to vote it out at that point, but once we hear from the Secretary. Yeah, and I've really and struggled, you know. Yeah. Yeah terms of, well, I wouldn't be proposing it if I were totally fossilized. I would be saying, oh, everything is perfect. Let's keep it the way it is. We just need to sit around and talk better. 
And I, I know some of the reasons where different programs or services ended up, and it has nothing to do with a rational alignment. No. It had to do with personalities, it had to do with what people didn't or did like. So some of what we have has absolutely no organizational um, basis for it. It's sort of like, you know, let's jettison that, or how do we, you know, make something uh, work. So it's a good time to take a look at, at functions and, um, and accountability and what is reasonable uh, for one person um, <coughs> uh, to really move forward on. Okay. Well, Thanks for not giving thank up. Yeah, thank you. Huh. I know, I can't believe I'm that old. That, no, that's not the that, implication of that. That's uh, the year I got married. 1967? I did too. My God, we're we, still we were, married. I yeah, thought well, we must be the most Jane, boring people in the world. We are, but we to remember that we were both um, promised at birth. We were child brides. Oh, <laughs> we're not that old. Oh, all right. I'm not that no, old. No, you're not that old. I'm we, not we, that old. You're not experienced. And you know, I have to say, I feel really. I have been in state government, and I can look back, and I, I really feel a sense of pride. Reach up which is a model <coughs> program, when I put that forward to replace the old income maintenance, that was a tough sell. It was a tough sell here. I was accused of leading an economic assault on the most economically oppressed women in the state. And now, people look back and say, it's human capital development, it's a two-generation approach. Assault. Yes, because it came with a work expectation oh. for parents. Um, Dr. Dinosaur, I mean, I'm really proud to be part of having universal coverage for our kids. The 211 system, I worked with Gretchen Morris to get the 211 system up, which was really, when you think about it, with, you know, and um, so um, I, I feel very fortunate that I've you been able. Institutional impact, Jane Kitchell. Well, that's great. Um, but I also feel like, gee, wasn't I lucky to be at the right place to, at the right time and be able to do this, so. And now you think how much more we still have to do to. Well, that's right. I I'm know. Not, you know, we can't be complacent, Allison. We have I to, know. Huh? Um, but I also, and I was involved, you know, with uh, the first effort on um, health care reform with um, Governor Dean. Uh, when that fell apart, then we picked it up. We did the uh, Vermont Health Ex Health Access Plan VHAP, which was the first effort to really get away from the cate categorical eligibility for Medicaid and help low-income workers. Um, so uh, a lot of things have happened over that period of time. There was no food stamp program when I first started, and the overseers of the poor were still in place. Mm. So that gives you some historical context of... And fence sitters were still there. Yeah, well, fence are still there. Fence so viewers understood. are still there. Yeah. 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 I don't. I didn't have anything to do with them. You know, we should probably be um, doing this in more, more than just this agency. I mean, if we were going to start right now to create a state government, mm -hmm. we probably would not create it the way it is right now. Probably in, not. In well, a maybe. lot of areas. So actually, maybe this might inspire us to call for a review of the effective design of state government. No, you take on too, no. too much and it, it, it becomes... Okay. Um, well, we can do it agency by agency. Uh, we're great incrementalists. We succeed when we're doing somewhat, uh, at least to some extent. Now, some people would like the... We've tried the Big Bang, and sometimes that doesn't work, but then we pick it up and move forward and don't give up. So anyway, that's, um, that's sort of the view over the last few years, and I'm sure Jen gave you a much more. And basically, I just we worked from the bill that you passed with the, um, yeah. with the changes that you made from when it was introduced, so it's, um, it wasn't an attempt to kind of um, redo that territory. Yeah. No, right. It, right, it started with what was passed out of the Senate. Yes, right, the yeah. uh -huh. and yeah. reflects the work that this committee did um, several years ago. But I do have the report. I do have the report on 
the welfare reforms, foundation for change. I have um, quite a bit of stuff. Ta Tanya have. doesn't have those already. The archivist. Well, she probably yeah. does, but Jane has. I have my own yeah. file. Yeah, I have my own file. Uh huh. I have an article by Jerry Anderson. Remember, he came up and testified. Um, healthcare reform oversight on the cost of obesity to the healthcare system. He testified back in 2000 and. Too, so I have. It's amazing when I go back and look at some of the stuff I've got. We have similar reports on law enforcement here, dating back to 1960. I bet you do. Yeah, I bet you do. So thank you, Senator. Thank you. Let's see if the education. Well launched. What are you doing here, Virginia? Oh, just checking in, seeing what's going on. All right. All right. Um. We don't have anything else on our agenda today, I don't think. Do we? No. And Nolan, you don't want to tell us how much it's going to cost. If yet. I knew. Huh? If I knew, I would tell you. Okay. Well, and we really don't know, do we? Because no, I don't, think, I don't think it's known. I think what you would do is you'd put in some kind of mechanism for budget adjustment, maybe. Or we could talk about it yeah. if you move forward, but I don't know that there is enough cost at this moment. Stephanie may have worked on it on one of the other previous iterations. Yeah, I, I I'll check it with her. Yeah, I do because I think there was some stuff around that. Yeah, if we put in something like we would put in around sort of continuing the appropriations, I think it came from her. Yeah. yeah. I'll check it with her. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you.